<laughs> this is what I do it on. And I thought, okay, it'll it'll be worth good laugh. I am techie, but for some reason, I use a lot of pen and paper. Um, so, you know what what benefits are there for for parents who are saying, "Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to stick with that pen and paper thing," but but um, kind of get us thinking that maybe there's some tech that might be helpful. And, yeah. And, so I still do things on pen and pa- with pen and paper too. So mm-hmm. I definitely don't think it's just something that you have to throw out. And the whole concept of technology is meant to make your life easier and better. Mm-hmm. So okay. if it's not, then there isn't a point for it. Mm-hmm. So despite the fact I use a lot of tech, I, there are still pens and paper everywhere. And I'm still one of those who likes an old fashioned book in my hands. Yes. <laughs> so, uh-huh. <laughs> I have a tech So th- there are always limits to tech. And sometimes tech can take you longer than it's worth. So I will mm. still often during the day just have like a, a to do list just for like the day or like a packing list or something that's specific. And I will just yes. like make it on pen and paper and just cross it off. Mm. So I'm not saying that you should abandon pen and paper if it works for you, but here are some things to consider. First of all, you can take whatever you have done wherever you go. And Mm -hmm. it means that when you are in a secondhand bookstore and you are thinking now, what are all those, the books that I'm needing for my kids for next semester? You have it. Because mm-hmm. if you've got if you've got everything synced and you've got apps and on your phone that mm-hmm. sync up with me, because I prefer to work on my desktop. I'm getting old and my eyes are older. So <laughs> I, but it's still nice to have those apps. So when I'm out and I'm thinking about it, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I can still access it. Yeah. If you've got everything planned in pen and paper and you weren't expecting to stop at that place mm-hmm. or whatever it is, and you didn't take it with you, you now can't remember now which Saxon was I needing or whatever it is, you know. It's, right. it's so it's it's portable because it's it's all on your phone um and you know i just use it for my shopping lists mm-hmm. just my ordinary mm-hmm. grocery I, I use a thing called any list which um it mm-hmm. also it, by the way this is not di- directly homeschool organization but seeing as everybody has to eat i know the other yes, apps exactly. i think any list <laughs> is just is just on um on on, on iphones but you mm-hmm. get other ones and they're free i mean everything i'm telling you about tonight by the way is free um they may have paid plans but i'm a big believer in free <laughs> Watch as my kids all became teens, and of course, they're forever like you know, running out of their favorite food stuff. Mm. Everybody had the app on their phone, and oh. they would then add what they needed from the store, or they needed something for their science experiment. You know, they needed red cabbage mm-hmm. to do those indicator experiments, whatever. They would <laughs> right. put it on there. And then when I went to the store, I you know, if I went and they were out or whatever, I didn't have to be trying to text them and raise them because I knew what they needed. It was on that. Also, if my husband was stopping wow. off at the store on the way home because he was picking up something, he didn't have to say, well, what do you guys need? He knew because he had the app. Okay. So that's a, um, um, so getting yourself a shopping list, which wasn't even on my list of things I was going to mention today, is very useful organization of your eating (laughs) habits. You must (laughs) need it to mention it for somebody out there. So (laughs) So anyway, there, uh, you know, it's it's just great because it's it's everybody's accessing the same thing and, you know, you've got it. But that's, that's one of the things you can't lose it. So now yours are big and they probably won't lose it, Mm. but I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that has to work at being tidy and organized. Mm. And so um, I'm one of those who will have sat there with a paper planner and then doesn't know where I put it. Okay. You know, whereas if it's on my computer, it's, you know, I, I have got fairly organized to knowing where things are. I, I've been mm-hmm. reasonably good about organizing my files and things. But even if I've misfiled it, I can search and exactly. find what I'm looking for. Exactly. Yes. It's a whole lot easier searching on my computer than it is searching through my house mm-hmm. um, to see where, you know, I've gotten to it. It's, the next reason is it's easy to share with other people. So I've just actually used a great example, the shopping app, right. but there are various mm-hmm. other tools that you can share. Now, you may want to share this with another homeschool parent. You may be planning play dates or whatever. Mm-hmm. Google Calendar is a great way, you know, something oh, yes. to use, something like that, mm-hmm. where you've got a shared calendar. But there are many of these, almost everything I think I'm talking about today is you can actually share with somebody else. Mm, and mm-hmm. so, which is not the same thing as having to make hundreds of copies of whatever you've got. Yes. And then every time you make a change, um, mm-hmm. you know, then you're going to have to like re-give everybody the next schedule. Whereas if it's all, you know, 
on, on Google Drive somehow, mm -hmm. the schedule changes, everybody's changes automatically. So that saves yeah, so you. gives them alerts. You don't even have to send the message. <laughs> exactly. And um, another reason to, to do it is that it's, it's easy to, to um, use with your kids. So mm. as they're getting older and you wanted to share a schedule with your kid, like you planning out their week for them or you wanting them to mm. share their week, you can share with each other. And obviously, if you've got a five or six year old, I hope they're not they don't have phones and you know <laughs> that's not the idea at this point. But as they're getting older is that you can actually you can you could work with them and it's easy to share. Mm -hmm. And then it's easy to copy and reuse what you've done. So you've mm, got your whole okay. planner then. I know you've only got one kid left. Now, if you've right. got younger kids and you've got the next one following two years later doing a very similar schedule, yeah. even if you kept your old paper schedules and the cat didn't eat it and, you know, <laughs> and the baby threw up on it and all the rest, even if you actually still know where it is and you have it, you're going to have to hand copy all that. Yeah. Whereas if it's mm -hmm. digital – there's always easy ways just to copy and tweak it. Mm. And that saves you a lot of time. Uh, right. And even if you're moving like from a ninth grader to a 10th grader, there's still probably going to be a lot of overlap even for the same child mm. to mm -hmm. just copy their schedule and so you don't have to start from scratch. So yeah. I find that a lot of what I do, I'm copying old things and mm. just tweaking. You know, even when teaching at co-op, I, I reteach the classes. I just go and find my old oh, schedule. Yeah. All I have to do is change mm -hmm. the dates. Right. I don't have to read do anything you know it's all mm. there and I had it planned out and if I want to change up something I can but it's in front of me so those are some of the reasons that I would suggest that you consider moving away from paper and if mm. those aren't uh, good reasons for you then you probably need to keep the paper <laughs> you know but because I'm you know I, I agree sometimes honestly it's, it's quicker and easier to do the paper so you, you know if none of those reasons applies then don't change what you're doing.